Welcome back. You're still watching Politics Tonight. Dig and beyond the headlines. And now to our interview with the second guest of the day. I am joined by a lawyer and political analyst, Lemona Noja, for discussion on how Governor Dowden Lawal is fixing Zamfara State. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir. Thank you very much for having me, Jumaka. All right. So, uh, Governor Dado Lawal is more than two months in the saddle in Zanfara State. How would you describe the way he has piloted its affairs so far? Um, I'm very pleased by the way he has gotten into his taking over office. Not just taking over office, but taking over the planning for the immediate, for the present and then the future of, of, of the state. Um, it is important to realize where Zamfara is coming from. It's perhaps one of the states with the is the state with the worst developmental indices in, in in the country. It is a state that has been brought to its knees by the effects of poor governance and government by successive um, by successive administrations. It is a state that has cried out for the sort of organization and visionary leadership that he's bringing to bear. So um, his taking over is, is, is immediately realized, you know, the, the improvements that need to be made for the purposes of improving lives, welfare and well-being of the people in terms of um, infrastructure, in terms of realizing that education is the quickest way out to alleviating poverty and pulling millions of people out of poverty, in terms of providing social services to the people. And even though it's just been 60 days, it's very clear that this is a person with a plan. This is a person with focus. This is a person with vision to improve the lives of the average and ordinary citizen in the state better than any of the previous administrations before him. So what changes will you say uh, the state has witnessed since Governor Nawal took over? One of the quickest things to say is, Zamba, I mean, even in the state capital, so. For years, there hasn't even been water, even though there's, there's been the capacity to provide pipe bomb water for the people who live there. Within two weeks, you resolve that. And water flows, and people are able to open taps and get access to water. And that is not just in the state capital. That is already extending to other, um, other local governments outside of the state capital. Another thing that I'm very struck by is the immediate ability for students to write the NECO exams this year. Now, if we remember correctly, since 2019, a total of about 80,000 students have either not been able to write WIEC or have been unable to access their results from 2019 and then 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. No students wrote WIEC, NECO, or any of those other exams that you know, you are for which you obtain the senior school leaving certificate. About 80,000 is coming to office. That has changed immediately this year, where we had a large number of people being able to write the exams. The, 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 the governor is meeting with the, has met with the, has met with the leadership of Wayek and NEPO to restructure and then to ensure the payment of about 3.4 billion that the state government owes to these two exam bodies are um, for fees, which is the reason why students have been prevented from writing exams. Straight away, you see that this is a person who is looking for how to quickly and efficiently ensure that we use education as a pathway to pulling millions of people out of poverty. It goes beyond that, you know, there's been severe, um, there's been several meetings with leadership of UBEC, with leadership of TED Fund to ensure where the government has given, the governor has given very solid commitments that they will pay, that the state will pay its own portion of counter, counterpart funding to ensure that you're able to improve access to education, you're able to improve quality of education, you're able to improve infrastructure surrounding education, and that you're able to ensure that learning outcomes for the students improve drastically. Um, it's also important to take into consideration security. Zambara is one of the states that have been the most plagued by attacks from bandits. I prefer to call them what they are, terrorists. And this is a governor who has immediately met with the leadership of the military, well, with the heads of the military, the DSS, the National Intelligence Agency, and all of that 
to see that the state stops paying lip service that the former administration of um, um, Governor Bello Matawale was paying and then providing the on-ground support and infrastructure that the state requires, that the security agencies require to improve immediately or as quickly as possible the security in the state. And it's already yielding results. Attacks have gone down um, by large, a very large percentage. Kidnappings have gone down by a very large percentage. And even though every death, every incident is regrettable and is and there's, um, there's work that is being done to ensure that they don't repeat themselves, there is a very clear, very concise reduction in the, in the frequency of these attacks and incidents. All right, Mr. Anonja, let's go on with our conversation. Uh, Zamfara is one of the states in the north with high number of out-of-school children. And as of last year, the number uh, had risen to over 800,000, making a total of 61%. Uh, what is the administration doing to check this? This, this statistic that you just reeled out is, is the reason why the governor has gone straight away to Tet Fund and has gone to UBEC, Universal Basic Education, the Universal Basic Education Commission. The, the, uh, the entire experience for education, particularly basic education in Zamfara, has been severely degraded over the years. We have infrastructure that is failing. We have an unmotivated teaching staff that is old salaries and that isn't allowed to work in the best conditions, isn't frequently trained, isn't well equipped. You have students that don't uh, aren't motivated to, um, to attend school. You have the security situation that discourages parents from sending themselves um, their children to school. Once you take everything into consideration, the existential facts severely discourage education. And the result that we have seen is an increase in the number of out-of-school students on a year-on-year -year basis. If you also take into consideration certain things like the fact that students are simply trained or students who eventually attend school, get all the way to SS3, and then are unable to write the exams that give them a certificate that show that they have received education up to that level, you see that there's serious discouragement there. I, I mean, for a, it is a well-known fact. For three years now, no student from Zamfara has written Wayek or Neku, absolutely zero, for three years. That is an abominable state of um, situations, an abominable state of affairs. What we have is a governor who has come, who is determined to change that out. So you are having um, improvements to the school curriculum. You are having commitments to an immediate work around improving school infrastructure. You are having work being done to improve security around schools, so that our children, well, children there can go to school and come back home safely. You're having a clearing of backlogs of salaries and allowances owed to teachers and teaching, well, teaching and non-teaching staff in the state. And you're having, you know, a commitment to ensure that education is used as a viable tool to pull millions of people out of poverty by upskilling them and ensuring that they can offer skills in the marketplace that will earn them a decent living. So it's a remarkable dis, um, deviation from the, from the past of the not distant and the not too distant. I mean, we, everybody knows how abominable um, Governor Bello Matawali's approach to education was. It is refreshing to see that something different is being done. It is refreshing to see that there's a completely different tack being taken towards improving education and reducing the number of out-of-school children in the state. All right. So Zafara has one minister-designate from those confirmed by the Senate, and that's former Governor Bedo Matawale, who is in the opposition party in the state. What's your take on this? I think that, I think that um, President Tinubu didn't do the state any, any good, or he didn't do the state any favors in nominating Bello Matawale, the former governor of the state. If you, I mean, a few days ago, we saw the CV that he presented to the, to the Senate, which showed that, you know, the last improvement in his capacity was done sometime in the, ninth, in the 80s or in the early 90s, which was, what, more than 20 years ago. We've seen that, you know, we've seen his superintending of the state, which has caused the state to descend into chaos 
and confusion and near shambles. We have seen that he's a person who there is a very solid, very credible allegation against for the misappropriation of state funds to the tune of 70 billion naira. We've seen a person who carted away state properties that were worth billions of naira. We've seen a person in whose possession and who the state had to forcefully retrieve cars that were worth billions of naira. That is not a person that means the state well. That is not a person with a credible track record of service, of public service. To nominate, I mean, out of all the media, out of all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of qualified citizens from the state for President Tinubu to nominate um, the immediate past governor of the state, who, well, um, well it's, it's, I don't think he did the state any favors. I mean, I have many criticisms about his ministerial list, but particularly that person, you know, that former governor, it's a shame and it's shambolic to nominate such a person as, as a minister. All right. Mr. Uh, Anodja, I mean, these, are, these are allegations you're making. But then, are you saying all of this um, because the allegations, you think... Excuse me, Jumoke. Excuse me, Jumoke. The allegations were not made by me. It was the EFCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that said that Alaji Bello Matawale had misappropriated state funds to the Well, I call these allegations billion. because these have not been proven... Uh, but then, are you saying all this because you think uh, if Matawali is eventually inaugurated as a minister, uh, it would become a big political threat to Governor Lawal? I don't think so. He was roundly rejected at the polls. He was roundly rejected by, by the people of the state. He was, you know, if you remember, in the first place, the people, well, it's not because of, of the decisions of the Supreme Court, very right as they were. He wasn't even elected in the first place. The people of the state know who he was know who he is, and know who he will continue to be, which is the reason why they rejected him in the past, rejected him presently, and will continue to reject him in the future. I don't see, I don't see, I don't see him being a political threat to a very popular, to a very well, um, well-learned, well-schooled visionary governor like Dauda Lawal. I don't, I don't see the existence of, his, of him as a political threat. All right, so uh, insecurity remains the biggest challenge uh, faced by Zamfara State. What's the situation now, and has there been any improvement? There have been improvements. There have been improvements, and there will continue to be improvements, and I'll explain. One of the basic things that the state lacked was the one, the political willpower to cooperate with the federal, with federal security agencies to reduce incidents of of criminality and the incidents of terrorism, you know, that manifested in banditry and kidnapping. That has changed. The political will is present now. One of the other things that they lacked was local cooperation because there were many leaks in the state apparatus, locals were unwilling to cooperate and pass, um, pass across intelligence to ensure that, you know, these terrorists were rounded up and, and um, demobilized. That has changed as well. The citizens of the state have seen a governor that they can trust, an administration that they can trust to protect them and to protect the sources of intel. And so those sources of intel are being, you know, are being more forthcoming. Another thing the state was refusing in the past, it was unable or unwilling to provide local support, vehicles, um, strategic and logistic support. That has also changed which is the reason why you see that there has been a drastic reduction in the amounts of kidnappings. There's been a drastic reduction in the incidents of terrorism and banditry that have plagued the state since May 29th. And we believe that if so much can be done in such little time, given a little longer time, um, incidents of terrorism and criminality and banditry in the state will be a thing of the past. All uh, right, like uh, Mr. Earlier, Noja, like I said earlier, I mean, with all of this you're saying, is... Mr. Noja, with all of this you're saying, uh, villages are still being ransacked. And I mean, report says in less than 60 days since the Oda Lawal assumed office, over 1,000 people were ki killed and more than 500 abducted. In Zamfara State? Uh, that's, I, I, I do not believe that statistic. I know and I agree, and which goes back to what I was saying. There have been incidents. The incidents are regretted, but there's been a 
drastic reduction in the number of these incidents and the number of victims. It is not going to, it is not in my place to, to, to play down these incidents. They're deeply regretted. And they existed, they've gone on in Zamfara State. Zamfara State has been a terrorist sub for a while. So it's going to take a while. We just, um, I, I just believe that the work, and I, the evidence supports me, that the work is being done to reduce the number of these incidents and to eventually stamp them out completely. All right. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with a lawyer and political analyst, Lemonal Noja, tonight to discuss the performance of Governor Dauda Lawa. Thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at TVC News NGN at Olajuwoke double using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Olajuwoke Olatunji. See you Monday. <laughs>